Hey everybody, welcome back to some more Early Morning Barking, talking about BPD and MPD by somebody that has both. So I've been talking a lot about coping mechanisms recently, things you should do, shouldn't do, all of that, good, bad things. Go back, watch old videos. You're clever people, you can figure it out. But today, let's, instead of talking the talk, we're going to walk the walk. We're going to do a thing and it's going to hurt and it's going to be difficult. It's going to hurt me. It's not going to hurt you. Don't worry. Um, and this video is, there will be a sort of shorter TikTok version of this. If you can't be bothered with this, I don't know how long I'm going to ramble for, but yeah, let's, let's talk about something because I have a thing. I do a thing. We've touched on it a bit before, but yeah. So my, my coping mechanism is weed. I'm not a drinker. I don't, you know, anything like that, but I, I get through a lot of weed a lot and I have, uh, Oh God, many years at this point. I think I first discovered it at uni. Um, and so at the time, God, it wasn't my first go around at uni, but sort of it's, it's been about 20 years plus at this point, right? That weed has been a, a regular, not just daily, but throughout the day thing for me. It's a get up smoke and continue smoking throughout the day you have never seen a video of me ever where i haven't had weed in my system apart from right now this is the first one um and it's a coping mechanism it's, it's like all the other coping mechanisms there are and it's a damaging one i mean God, we're talking as if it's not a first of all an illegal thing, which which brings with it all those perils and pitfalls and and that sort of thing. But there are financial concerns, there are health concerns, there are there's so many reasons to stop doing this thing. And most of all, the important thing, what I've come to talk to you about mainly today, is what am I using it? as a coping mechanism for because at this point it's been so long that i have lost track of that i i honestly don't know anymore what i think it's helping me with and why i'm doing it still and yet stopping it and giving it up is really really difficult i mean this is a habit right this there are so many things in my life associated with it it is part of my routine from from day to day like i say you get up in the morning you make a coffee you roll a joint and i sit at my desk for two hours while i sip coffee mindlessly browse the internet and get hammered and that's how every day starts that's not a good thing, but that's how just intrinsically linked it is. I can't, there are some things that like, yeah, I'll do that, but after I've smoked something and there are certain like unmovable points throughout the day where I need to smoke something. Uh, there's the getting up one. There's the after meals ones. There's the, I've got back in home from wherever I've been out. I need to do that. Or there's a job that needs doing. So I'll do this thing first and whatever. And, and you know, I'm going to bed soon. I need to be stoned before I go to bed. Otherwise I'm not going to sleep. There are so many things in my life throughout the day that I think this is helping me cope with that. I, I'm of some sort of belief that I can only do these things once I've done this other thing. And so the fear of those things not being able to happen, like tonight, am I going to sleep tonight? I, am I, am I going to be climbing the walls, unable to sleep, unable to relax, unable to be calm and settle to just live my life as a person? Or am I going to just be caught up in this? I need more weed thing. Tonight's going to be the, the difficult one. I mean, I can do a day right? I can get up and just get on with my day and that sort of thing. And so it's going to be tough tonight and it's going to keep being tough. But I think over the next week or so, it's going to ease off. And if I can keep it up, then I'll, I'll sort of be okay with it. But what I always talk about 
in these videos is, you know, you can't just remove the crutch. You can't just remove the coping mechanism. It's a coping mechanism. I am coping with something, but I've lost track of what I'm coping with. So how do I do that? And the answer is, as I sit here, I don't know. I need to experience this and live it and go through it for a few days and figure out what the hell is going on here for me? There's a lot of self analytics. Is that the right way of putting it? There's a lot of self assessment. There's a lot of digging deep going on here. And it's going to come out over the next few days. What is it that I am using this thing to cope with? How do I feel differently without it? Because I've lost track of that now and I don't know. From just today alone, you know, and I'm recording this, it's five past four in the, uh, five past five in the afternoon. And I got up about half 10 ish, something like that. It's a bank holiday. Don't judge me. Right. And I've, you know, there's been nothing to smoke and you get up and there's this initial sort of uh, no weed today. I guess I'm going to have to find something else to do. And there's already, you wake up with disappointment, with frustration, with my day is not going to go how I want it to go. And I have to do all those normal things that normal people do. So I can, you know, I, I can deal with the nicotine intake. That's, that's a vape. That's easily done. I can handle that. And so I've vaped a lot all day. That's, that's been a thing because it's replacing that, that physical need for it, that desire to just have something in my hand, to be inhaling something, to be, to have that nicotine fix that's dealing with that but i've noticed just today already as soon as i get up and don't smoke something that i'm immediately like i haven't seen i need to go i need to do something i need to get up and do something there's energy here that's being that's not being pushed down into doing nothing and being just trapped at sitting here at my desk and staring at youtube for hours mindlessly and zoning out it's it's not being pushed down so now I'm left with this excess, this like need to do something, wasting time. I, I, I don't know. And I don't think this is necessarily a BPD or MPD thing. I, I actually think that what it's quashing down is more an ADHD related thing. That sort of buzzing hyperactivity can't sit still, can't not be doing something, need that dopamine hit kind of thing. And I've, I've, Today, we've been for a walk, we've been shopping, we've been to Starbucks, we've been out the house, we've done as much as we can do. And I'm still like, I need to need to do something, need to keep moving, need to keep getting stuff done, need to expel this energy in some way. And I don't have that thing yet. I don't, I don't have the other way of dealing with that. My plan is, fingers crossed, exercise which needs to come back for me a bit i was doing that for a while it was going really well i'd lost some weight i looked much better i was happier i was healthier i was sleeping better i was eating better all kinds of things and i i think that's gonna hopefully if i can channel some of this it almost feels like nervous energy and i think if i can channel it into some sort of workout thing that might be a good direction for that energy to go in um, so I guess we check back on day two, et cetera, for stuff like that. You know, it, it can be, uh, we, we need to figure out, I need to figure out more about what's going on for me and that sort of thing. So the next week or two is going to be interesting. We're going to deal with me ditching a coping mechanism. Maybe. I mean, look, I'm going to do my best. I have been here a million times before and I don't know what's different about this way this time round, other than I'm telling you about it. We're going to hopefully talk about it and analyze the crap out of it and figure out what I think I'm coping with and how I fix those things in a healthy way so that I can hopefully avoid going back down the path that I've been down before to cope with whatever the hell it is I might be coping with. But we're not going to find out what that is for another few days at the earliest. So I'm in this strange limbo zone right now. 
where I want to stop, I know I should stop. But why? You know, why on a personal level? Yes, all those are the, you know, legality, money, health. Those, those are your big three. I'm not too fussed on the legality thing, but the money and the health. I can't afford this. Uh, you know, I'm in serious financial doo-doo right now. So, you know, always finding money to get weed with, that's it's not helping me. That's not good. And then the health concerns. I mean, God, I sit and I lie awake every night in bed. Like, what if I've got cancer? What if I've got this? What if I'm doing this to myself? That, that The opposite of suicidal ideation. And I, I don't think you can be scared of such things when you are knowingly doing something so harmful to yourself. Right? Can I can I really sit and stay awake at night complaining like, oh, but what if I get cancer? Like, well, stop smoking then. You know? So there are there are health reasons for this. I I don't want to be that guy. And I also don't want to be so reliant on something. Like I need this. Do I do I need it? Like I can't handle life on my own. Maybe that's the case. We don't know. We'll see. But it doesn't feel right. It feels like I'm reliant on something. I am tied to something. I am the slave of something. Right? That I have this thing. And I have to have this thing. And if I don't, the whole world goes to crap. And that's how I react to it. So this voluntary giving up. At least I'm doing something. And I can tell you guys about it, right? Cutting out a coping mechanism is hard. It's very hard. And I think, you know, just talking through it, just going through it together, this will be a helpful thing for both of us. And I, th I think if I can share it with you guys, then, you know, I have a better chance of success. But we'll see how things go. Because <sighs> right now, right now, things are things are difficult all right i'm sitting in front of a lot of triggers i'm sat in a trigger normally i will smoke something before i make a video there will be something there to smoke after i've made the video and i'm editing it sitting at this desk and talking to you guys making videos doing work this is all a trigger this is something that happens with smoke traditionally um what I would advise you if you were doing this and coming to my advice, coming to me for advice is to avoid these environments. Uh, I, so if sitting at my desk to work is a trigger, then I need to sit somewhere else to work. That kind of thing. And uh, unfortunately, that is easier said than done. I'd like a laptop to go and work in another room of the house or out of the house. And that's just not the way things are wired right now. Um so I'm trying to work my way around things. I'm trying to talk my way through it. I'm trying to figure it out and figure out a good way forward from here. Um, and maybe there will be a slip up along the way. Maybe I'm already giving myself permission to slip up by saying that. And I, I don't know. So there are a lot of question marks with this one, but I think it, it, it warrants going through it publicly and together and talking about it a lot because i think there's a lot of you out there who also have unhealthy coping mechanisms that you'd like to get away from and again back to this idea of if i can do it you can do it so i should try and do it right i don't seem so sure about it right now it was more last night you take care i'll see you later Bye-bye.